Jack Cuss. For the A's, they are two and six in interleague play, and they've been struggling over the last ten games, hitting only 189. But Kennedy is holding his own, batting 308, and Adam takes off the plate. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. The Kennedy five home runs, 22 runs batted in. Wolf into the windup, back with a fastball that's just outside. Two balls and no strikes. Randy has not faced Kennedy and vice versa, but he has pitched to Cabrera, Jambi, and Holiday. Randy into the windup, the 2 0 pitch on the way, and that's just about the same spot off the plate, ball three. Beautiful evening, 72 degrees. Randy has been bothered for a couple of weeks now with a heavy cough. Bronchitis, or now they were talking about maybe it's what usually afflicts little kids, whooping cough, but whatever, it's made his voice a little husky, as you can imagine. 3 0 pitch on the way is in there for a spike, and the count 3 and 1. Kennedy, Suzuki, and Cuss facing the 32 year old left handed. Randy turns on the rubber in the 3 1 pitch, and that's high, ball four. So for Adam Kennedy, he's been an ideal leadoff man in the series. In game one, he led off with a single to left. Last night, he led off with a double to right. And tonight, he leads off with a base on balls. So Adam Kennedy at first, nobody out. Suzuki, Cust, and Holiday in that order. Kurt Suzuki, the man from Maui. And a good solid ball player who's been very impressive behind the plate and also with the bat. Hitting a solid 274. Wolf ready and delivers fastball strike. Kurt from Wailuku on the island of Maui. Three home runs, 22 RBIs, wearing that puka shell necklace. He always wears that. Suzuki in last night's game, one for four. And in the game before that, he was two for five. Throw to first, back on the bag is Adam Kennedy. Checking his numbers, Kennedy has stolen six out of nine, but they might very well be thinking hit and run more than straight steal this early in the game. Wolf at the belt, ready, Randy back with a curveball, punched on the ground to Hudson. The feed to for Paul, who guns it to first, and they get the double play. So a 4 6 3 double play, and since the Dodgers sparkle defensively, here they are. Pierre, Kemp, and Ethier in the outfield. Lake for call, Hudson and Loney on the infield. And the battery of Russell Martin handling Randy Wolf. So two down, and Jack Cust will be coming up. Cust has had a rather interesting series. He is a fellow who has a lot of power 12 home runs, 36 runs batted in. He also strikes out a lot. He went 0 for 5 in the first game, striking out twice. Struck out his first time up last night, but then hit a home run. Had a bunt single because they shifted three men on the right side, and he just bunted it up along third. And then last time up last night, robbed of an extra base hit on a leaping backhand catch by James Loney at first base. And for good measure, Jack Cust dropped a fly ball in right field to shock everybody in the ballpark. Jack, left-hand hitter, looks at a slow curveball off the plate. One ball and one strike. Cust, by the way, dropped the fly ball hit by Orlando Hudson. The A's have been a bit shaky during the series. The 1-1 pitch on the way, Cust takes off the plate. They had three errors last night. Would have had another except when Abrero dropped the pop fly. It was the infield fly rule, so no advance. Two and one, the pitch to Jack Cust, and the left hand hitter checks. It's on the outside corner. He didn't think so. And the count two balls and two strikes. Jim Joyce is the plate umpire. Over 21 years in the business. Jim, born in Ohio, lives in Oregon, and he'll be calling balls and strikes. May be related to Irish author James Joyce, Ulysses, etc. Two and two to count. Wolf with two down, first inning, thanks to the double play off the bat of Suzuki. On deck, Matt Holiday. 
And the 2 2 pitch on the way is a fastball low, ball three. The three and two to count to Jack Cuss. Dodgers will be looking at another young pitcher. And of course, the A's basing their whole future on the shoulders of five youngsters. The next one is strike three call. Slider on the outside corner. That'll do it for Cuss and for the A's. And at the end of half an inning, athletics nothing, Dodgers coming. Rafael for call, then Orlando Hudson. Casey Blake gets clean up with Andre Epier back of him, and Matt Kemp, James Loney, Russell Martin, and Randy Wolf. Out on the mound, Vin Mazzaro. He's a Jersey boy from Hackensack and lives in Rutherford, New Jersey. And Vin works very quickly. In fact, his last time out against Tim Lincecum, it was a two hour and seven minute game. So let's see what he does tonight. Big fastball in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Mazzaro is 6'2, 195, and he's only 22 years old. The strike one pitch to Pierre, another strike, and the count 0 and 2. Mazzaro hangs right around the rubber and he pitches from the first base side of it. So Pierre backs out for a moment, hitting 330. And Mazzaro right back with a fastball. Little topper slowly to Kennedy. Adam throws and gets him at first base. So one away, and that will bring up Raphael for a call. We'll take a look at the A's defensively. Holiday Davis and Cust in the outfield. The infield of Crosby, Cabrera, Kennedy, and Jambi with Orlando's two gold gloves. And Vin Mazzaro handled by Kurt Suzuki. So one away and Raphael for call checking in batting left handed and hitting 249 from this side of the plate and overall 247. Mazzaro who throws hard he's been clocked up to 95 comes in with a fastball strike and the count 0 and 1. Fastball curveball slider and change and the next one misses one ball one strike. In order, the scouts say Mazzaro will throw sliders and change ups, and then the curveball last in his repertoire. Another fastball in for a strike, and they count one and two. And as long as he agrees with Suzuki, they say he works rapidly. Then ready, and his one two fastball is off the plate. Two and two the count. Interesting with five young pitchers on the staff, the early report was all about Mazzaro. Fastball is swung on and missed, and down goes for call, and just like that, two down. The word about Mazzaro was in spring training that of the three kids, with Cahill starting it off, followed by last night's pitcher, and also before that in game one, Dallas Braden. But of Braden, Cahill, and Mazzaro, the scout said Mazzaro had the best stuff, but he was hit hard early, and he was sent out to the minors. 
But here he is now with two down in the first inning. No score in the ball game. And Orlando Hudson at the plate. Mazzaro's fastball just off the plate. Ball one. And he hits 95 on the gun. And that's what they say he will do. And he is not afraid to pitch inside. The 1 0 pitch is swung on and missed. 1 and 1. And looking at his numbers coming in, 53 strikeouts, 24 walks, so better than 2 to 1. Big fella ready, turns in the 1 1 pitch, and that drops low. Ball 2, 2 and 1 to count. His change up, the so called circle change. 2 1 pitch to Orlando is fouled back. That's where the thumb and the index finger touch on the side of the ball. And he likes that pitch. He'll throw it in almost any count. So Vin Mazzaro out of New Jersey. The 2 2 pitch on the way is a fastball just inside, and he hits 94. He was going to go to St. John's University in Brooklyn and then opted to go professional. He was a third round pick in 2005. 3 2 pitches swung on and foul back. The Dodgers have that wonderful record. They are 20 games above, 43 and 23, but they're brought to the earth in playing the American League. I mean, they are a break even 4 and 4 before heading for Anaheim. And down goes Orlando on a pitch down and away. So Mazzaro does two things they said he can do. He pitches in a hurry and he strikes out two of three. And at the It'll be Matt Holliday, Jason Jombi, and Orlando Cabrera. Matt Holliday, big right hand batter hitting 275. Eight home runs, 38 runs batted in. Matt has a look at a strike and the count 0 and 1. Holliday, 3 for 11 with a home run when he was in the National League against Randy Wynn. Uh, Randy Wolf. Here's the strike one pitch on the way, and that's fouled off to the right upstairs. And the count 0 and 2. So the Dodgers 4 and 4 against the American League, and the A's are 2 and 6 against the National League. Holiday waiting. Wolf looks down to get a sign, and the left hand already comes back up and in. One ball and two strikes, the count. After tonight's game, the Dodgers go to Anaheim, a three game series with the Angels. Then they go to Chicago to play the White Sox. The pitch inside ball two. The Dodgers are playing a string of 15 straight 
against the American League. It began with Texas, now Oakland, upcoming the Angels, the White Sox, and Seattle. And over that stretch, they've won three of five. A curveball missing inside under the hands, and a three and two count to the Squire from Stillwater, Matt Holliday. Three and two the count. Will from the middle of the rubber and the left hand already is 3 2 change up is swung on and missed and holiday with that good arm motion was way out in front of it and down he goes second strikeout for Randy Wolf boy that is a great pitch fell in love with that pitch back in 1955 when Johnny Padres beat the New York Yankees in the World Series primarily throwing a change up. Carl Erskine back in those days had a dandy. And now the batter is Jason Jambi in the pitch is right. You know how the Dodgers used to teach their pitchers to throw the change up? They used to tell them make believe you're pulling down a shade. Hard to do. Here's the strike one pitch on the way, and it's a fastball off the plate. One ball and one strike to Big Jambi. Nine home runs, 34 RBIs, but struggling, hitting only 209. When hitless last night, off speed pitch, and that's popped up. It'll be for call at the other end of it, waiting on the grass, and makes a catch for the second down. Two down in the second inning. And Orlando Cabrera coming up. Cabrera went one for four last night. He could easily have been three for four. Loney robbed him on a line drive. Orlando Hudson made a highlight play to take a hit away from him in the ninth inning last night, but he also did have a single to right. In the first game, he was 0 for 3 with two walks. Though Cabrera batting 230, two home runs, 21 runs batted in. Wolf comes back to him 1 0, and the fastball is hit over Loney's head into right field for a base hit. Though Cabrera, a two out single to right. And the batter now will be Bobby Crosby. Bobby Crosby appeared briefly as a pinch hitter in the first game. It was in the eighth inning, came off the bench and hit his third home run of the year. Then he was at the plate last night when Rajay Davis was thrown out, so he never did have a chance to swing the bat. The Crosby waiting, hitting 200. Right hander who's really struggling a left against left hand pitching. And there goes Cabrera, the throw to Loney. Loney to Percal, who pins him with the tag. The 1 3 6 if you're scoring. Cabrera picked off and caught stealing. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score.
They're all about 10 years old and thereabouts, and they brought a lot of ginger along with good appetites. Meanwhile, Casey Blake takes a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Bottom of the second, no score. Final game between the A's and the Dodgers. Leaving behind a lot of memories. Fastball in for a strike. 0 and 2 the count. Vin Mazzaro, born in Hackensack. Whenever I hear the, the name Hackensack, I think of an old Broadway play. Here's the strike two pitch to Blake, and that's way outside. It was called Plain and Fancy. And basically, it was about the Amish people, and it was a wonderful musical. But the lead lady sang a song about her boyfriend who was pretty boring. One, two fastball is inside. She said, most boyfriends would make Hackensack seem like Paris. My guy makes Paris seem like Hackensack. Well, here's the pitch from Mazzaro. Broken bad line drive base hit into right center. The Casey makes a turn and holds on as Rajay Davis gets the ball back in. You know, you can start your holiday off right with an Independence Day fireworks spectacular at Dodger Stadium on Tuesday, June 30th. Compliments of Hyundai. Watch the Dodgers and the Rockies, and after the game, all fans invited on the field to take in the show. For tickets, call 866-DODGERS or visit Dodgers.com today. So a broken bat line drive, base hit, and here comes Andre Ethier. Ethier, of course, has to be a little pumped going up against his former organization. Fouls the pitch back and the count on one. And of course, one of the more memorable experiences for Andre, I'm sure, was when he faced Dallas Braden in the first game of the series. Dallas Braden and Andre Ethier were roommates in the minor leagues in the A's organization when the kids were on the road. Strike one pitch on the way to Andre, and he has a look, and that's low. Ethier hitting 270, 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Mazzaro right foot on the rubber. Blake at first held on by Jambi. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Ethia waits. Fastball lined into right field for a base hit. Stopping at second is Blake as Cuss gets the ball back in. So Andre Ethier comes up with a solid single to right. Andre had a double and a single last night. So he's had three consecutive hits. He was 0 for 3 in the first game. So the Dodgers trying to come right after young Vin Mazzaro. First and second, nobody out, with Kemp, Loney, and Martin coming up in that order. Matt Kemp hitting 315, eight home runs, 37 runs batted in, an explosive type athlete. Last night stole second and third in the same inning. Mazzaro ready, Vin deals, and it squirted to the second baseman Kennedy, who has to throw just in time to Giambi. That nightmare play by a first baseman, when to go after it and when not to go after it, and Giambi was almost late getting Maybe back to the bag, but he made it. Seven. So as Jay Kemp grounds out, four or three, the runners move up to second and third. Casey Blake is now at third. Andre Ethier at second, one away. And here's Loney. James Loney hitting 280, two home runs, 44 runs batted in. Dodgers trying to get the drop on the A's. The A's scored early last night. At one stage, we're leading four to nothing and went on to win five four. They're going to take the bat right out of Loney's hands, and you can understand that for sure. James swinging a very hot stick, especially with runners in scoring position. And Russell Martin has really been struggling. So, naturally, the numbers dictate to put Loney on, even though Loney has been hitting just 188 in his last eight games. Nevertheless, Loney has a left handed batter. They have a place to put him, and they put him on. But when you look at Russell Martin, who is on deck, Russell is really struggling as ball three and now ball four loads him up. Russell Martin is one for 22 in his last six games, but it's a lot worse than that. In the month of June, he's hitting 093. So you can imagine just how 
how badly he wants to do something dramatic here with the bases loaded. He has one grand slam. He hit that a couple of years ago against Pittsburgh. So Martin checking in. He finds Blake, Ethier, and Loney out on the bash pads. One out, second inning, no score. Mazzaro ready, fastball swung on and missed. Although that did have some sink at the end. That's what they talked about. Late action on a Mazzaro fastball. 0 and 1 to Russell Martin, hitting 236. Mazzaro comes back over the top. Fastball is hit and backhanded by Cabrera. And the runners have to hold. Martin hit a soft line drive so that Cabrera was able to catch up to it. But then Orlando had to go high in the air and somehow was able to backhand the ball. And for Cabrera, he really had to go up the ladder because he's only 5'9". And that ball was definitely heading for left field. So a brilliant play by a guy with two gold gloves, Orlando Cabrera. And the batter now will be Randy Wolf. So Martin is denied and Wolf at the plate. Randy with the bat has two hits, big swing and a miss, and the count 0 and 1. Wolf also has three runs batted in. So he's top dog as far as the pitchers are concerned. Randy waiting, left hand batter slaps one foul down the left field line. So Mazzaro now has him no balls and two strikes. In the inning, Blake shattered his bat, had a line drive single. Keith here, a line drive single to right. They moved up on Kemp's ground ball, so they walked Loney. Cabrera, a leaping catch to take a two RBI single away from Martin. And Wolf takes outside, ball one. One and two to Randy. Mazzaro pitching out of a stretch with two down in the base and loaded. No score, second inning. One two pitch on the way. Vin deals, and that's high. And a two ball, two strike count. Mazzaro breezed through the first inning, striking out for Call and Hudson. Laboring a little bit here in the second. Two balls and two strikes. Mazzaro set and deals. Fastball swung on and missed. That's his third strikeout. Dodgers get two hits and a walk and leave three. And at the end of two. Game. Dodgers won game one. A's came back to win last night. Families are here. That's always a joy to see them taking in the game. Mom, dad, and a couple of their youngsters. 
And now it'll be Bobby Crosby left at the plate when Cabrera was nailed. Crosby, Davis, and Mazzaro in that order. Bobby, big right hand batter, waiting at the plate, and the first pitch in for a strike. Bobby is 6'3, 215. He was born in Lakewood, lives in Cyprus, and went to Long Beach State. Chip off the old block is Dad Ed, played in the big leagues with the Reds and with a very good Cincinnati ball club that won the Western Division Championship back in 1973. And the Dodgers won the next year. Here's the 1 1 pitch on the way to Bobby, and that's off speed way outside. 2 and 1 the count. Randy Wolf with a record of 3 and 2, trying to get a decision. Crosby waiting. Randy's 2 1 pitch on the way, and that's taken for a strike. And the count 2 and 2. What really got Bobby interested in baseball was not that his father played, but that his father was a scout. 2 2 pitch inside. And every weekend, Bobby, along with his dad, would go to at least one or two games. And during the games, his father would point out the good things and the bad things. And that's how he really was formed. He backs off on a pitch at the knee taps for ball four. The Crosby draws the walk. That is the second pass given up by Randy Wolf. And the batter now is Rajay Davis. Rajay Davis had a home run and a single last night. And he was one for four in the first game of the series. Fleet footed center fielder hitting 227. The Davis checking in at the plate. He's been around, came up with Pittsburgh, then the Giants. Shows bunt, slow curveball for a strike. That'd be a pretty good pitch to bunt. Off speed in the 60s, but he let it come by. No balls and one strike to count. No runs, one hit for the A's, no runs, two hits for the Dodgers. And the strike one pitch on the way. Randy's slow curveball is hit in the air to center. Kemp goes back to make the catch. And Crosby jogs back to first base. So a nice play by Matt going back on a ball hit over his head. And the batter is Vin Mazzaro, who, if nothing else, does have two sacrifices. That's pretty good for an American League pitcher. Got both sacrifices in his duel with Tim Lincecum in San Francisco. So they'll probably ask him to bunt again. With Crosby at first, one out in the third, no score. He shows bunt and fouls it back. Oh, and won the count. No score, top of the third. Dodgers going out on the road, Anaheim and Chicago. Next weekend on the 26th, the Dodgers will host Seattle and Ishiro. Strike one pitch. And the bunt is down. It'll be picked up by Wolf and the play to first. So for Vin Mazzaro, he knows how to bunt. That's his third sacrifice, advancing Crosby to second. second base, A reminder, you know, kids, you can train for the big leagues, play ball on the field at Dodger Stadium during junior Dodger training days. Children 7 to 12 will learn baseball skills from coaches and players, receive a free Dodgers jersey and hat. Purchase today at Dodgers.com slash Junior Dodgers or give us a call 323-224-2646. And we've got some Junior Dodgers sitting in the stands I'm sure. As Adam Kennedy takes in the dirt nice block by Russell Martin one ball and no strikes. Left hand batters. So far this year, have really struggled against Randy Wolf. Left hand hitters against him are five for 60. Randy ready, back he comes, working it away. Two and all the county, Kennedy. We'll do the math for you. That would be a batting average of 0 83. Two and all the count, Adam Kennedy hitting 308, walked in the first inning. Wolf set ready Randy overthrows misses outside with his fastball kind of snapped at it three and oh the count. He got out of his delivery on that pitch three and oh the count to Adam Kennedy. 
Wolf set at the belt and his 3 0 pitch and that one is outside. So even though left handers have not been able to do anything against him he has walked Adam Kennedy twice. That gives him three walks so far in the game he's had one hit. And he has struck out two. And the batter now Kurt Suzuki the grounded into a double play in the first inning. Suzuki who credits surfing for well, one of the reasons he is strong especially around the shoulders if you've ever done any surfing you get on the board and you have to paddle out against the wave. Kurt checks up it's a strike anyway and they count 0 and 1. So all that paddling out that helped him develop his shoulders and arms and then riding the waves that helped him with his balance and he's only 25. An impressive young catcher. Oh and one the count. Wolf said Randy back fastball whacked down the left field corner cutting it off nicely is Pierre one run will score and there'll be runners at second and third as Kurt Suzuki gives one a ride and doubles into the corner to score Crosby and it is one to nothing in favor of the A's. Right hitter, number 32. So Suzuki just went down and got it just above the knees, and he was all over that thing. So a line drive double, a run batted in, and the A's get the drop. Last night they led the Dodgers four to nothing. You also remember they led the Dodgers. Well, he had four in the eighth inning, coming from behind in Game One. So Suzuki. Visiting with second base umpire Ted Barrett with that line drive double. Two down, third inning, one to nothing in favor of the A's. And Jack Cuss, feast or famine hitter. 197 strikeouts last year. An American League record. But he can also hit him out of the ballpark. And he takes outside ball one. One and oh to Jack Cuss. So Randy Wolf. Falling behind, walking a couple and pays the price. Now you have Kennedy at third, Suzuki at second with two out. Wolf comes back, fastball uppercutted and missed, one and one. Cust uppercutted one and hit a towering home run halfway up the bleachers in left center in the third inning last night. So here he is in the third inning now, trying to do some more damage. Well, Hiroki Kuroda served up two home runs in the third inning. That was news. The next one is uppercutted and missed one and two. Kuroda had allowed two home runs in a game just a few times in his 36 game career. He had never given up three in a game and pretty sure he had never given up two home runs in one inning. Well, it was a tough night for Hiroki last evening. One and two the count to Jack Cust. Wolf leans in, reading Martin. Cust waiting. Outfield with Kemp shading just a little towards left center. And Martin's going to go out and talk to Randy, so timeout. One run, two hits for the A's. Their cause has been aided and abetted by three walks, two strikeouts. Dodgers, no runs, two hits. Left the bases loaded thanks to a leaping catch by Orlando Cabrera. On a ball off the bat of Russell Martin and Cabrera animated in talking to, among others, Nomar Garcia Parra. One and two the count. Wolf set, looks ready. Left hander's fastball is on the outside corner, strike three call. So Cuss strikes out a second time, but not before the A's get a run. And at the end of two and
team wearing their baseball cap full of baseball dreams. One of them looked young enough not to be sucking his thumb, but he was. And here we go in the bottom of the third after Randy Wolf struggled a bit and made 20 pitches in the third inning. Juan Pierre, Raphael Percall, and Orlando Hudson. One nothing Oakland, and the first pitch is off the plate, ball one, one and oh. Pierre grounded out in the first inning, hitting 328. Mazzaro's fastball jumps in there for a strike at 93, and a one ball, one strike count. Vin Mazzaro, 22 years old, another fine young pitcher for Oakland. Fastball is low, and a two and one count. So the Dodgers have to be convinced after looking at Dallas Braden, Trevor Cahill, and now Vin Mazzaro. The 2 1 pitch is swung on and fouled away, and the count 2 and 2. Well, Mazzaro last year, he was the Texas League Pitcher of the Year. He was at Midland. Late in the year, he was called up to Sacramento, and he was back and forth from Oakland and Sacramento this year. Now the 2 2 pitch, and Pierre hits one in the air to left center, but cruising over to pick it off is Holiday. And just like that, one away here in the third inning. You know, yesterday, Dodgers, Jonathan Broxton and Rafael Fricol visited Dodger Stadium's local fire station number 20. Broxton and Fricol met with firefighters, toured the station. Rafael even slid down the fireman's pole and got a big kick out of it. Also had to put on the heavy gear. Quite an experience, as he said. Sitting on top of a hook and ladder was like riding a snake. He runs, drags a bunt up along the first baseline. It goes foul. Though for Call, who rarely drags, most of the time he slaps the bunt towards the shortstop when he's hitting left handed. And that was a full drag right up along the line. And at the last minute, peeled off foul. 0 oh and 1 the count. Though so Raphael back up hitting 246, struck out in the first inning. Nazaro turns ready, big Vin deals, another fastball and another strike. Boy, he throws that thing like a dart. And as we mentioned, he's not afraid to come inside. 0 oh and 2 the count. Nazaro strike two pitch on the way, and that's just off the plate in low ball one. They say he also throws what you and I might call a knuckle curve, and the A's organization calls a spike curve. Fastball fouled off, still one and two. And of course, at this hour, with the sky still pretty bright, the lights have not taken effect. When you can throw in the 90s, why in the world would you monkey around with much else? The one two pitch on the way, and that's off the plate. Two and two, the count. So then Mazzaro, 22 out of New Jersey, the Garden State. Then ready from the first base side of the rubber, fastball is popped in the air off first base. Jambi in foul ground, and the coaching box makes the catch, and that'll do it for for call. Two out in the third inning, and Second Orlando base, Hudson 13, coming up. Hudson was blown away by a couple of really good fastballs in the first inning. Dodgers had a threat going in the second inning. Bases loaded, actually second and third and one out. They walk Loney. Martin hit a soft line drive, heading for left field for sure, and Orlando Cabrera made a great leaping catch to prevent two runs from scoring, and then Wolf struck out. So Cabrera has kept it. A's one, Dodgers nothing, and we're in the bottom of the third with two out. Fastball is whacked to center. Back goes Davis away back to the track at the wall. It's gone, and we have a 1-1 one, one tie. Hudson hits his fifth home run of the year. Got a breaking ball out over the plate. 
and cleared the center field wall. Rajay Davis had to stand helplessly and watch it go out. And we have a 1 1 tie. And with that home run, another $17,000 raised to support prostate cancer research. Remember to make a donation. Call 800 798 Cure or go online www.pcf.org. And Casey Blake takes a strike. 1 1 tie in the third as Orlando hits his fifth home run of the year. Been a while. Last one was a little over a week ago, June the 8th. And the pitch to Blake evens up the count. One ball and one strike. Now the 1 1 pitch on the way. Fast ball in there. When Hudson went to the far end of the dugout and sat down, the first thing that Juan Pierre did was hold up his hand with his fingers wide open, which usually indicates a change. It looked like a slow breaking ball from up here, and Hudson just hit it out of sight. So it's a 1 1 tie here in the third inning. They're retrieving a beach ball out there in center field. Here's the look, and it just started to dip away, and Hudson went after it and hits it out. Orlando stronger than you might think. They hit a ball over the center field wall when the pitch was actually a little bit away. Well, there's another beach ball out on the track, so timeout. Meanwhile, one ball and two strikes they count to Casey Blake. For Vin Mazzaro, that would be the first home run that he's allowed this year. And the pitch on a check swing is strike three called a bum check. One run, one hit, one swing of the bat. And we are honoring the people from People Magazine who have been selected as People All Stars Among Us. Jason Silver, who helps visually impaired children. Gerardo Gomez, activist for the homeless in the United States, Chile, and South Africa. And Barbara Palillis, who assists teens with special needs. So we're honored to salute them tonight as we continue with Heroes of the Week. Slow curveball to Matt Holiday is in for a strike, and the count on one. Holiday will be able to renew his friendships with some of his old body because when the A's go home, they will be playing Colorado. He checks up the pitch inside, one ball and one strike. Matt, of course, was quite a fixture and one of the pillars of the community in Denver. One and one. Line down the left field line in there. Pierre can't cut this off. The Holiday will bruise in the second base easily with his double. And for Holiday, that would be his 12th double of the year. So it's one to nothing. Then the Dodgers got the home run to tie. And our Aflac question of the night which pitcher earned the only win for Oakland? 
in the 1988 World Series against the Dodgers. Remember the Dodgers won that four games to one. Who was the pitcher who beat the Dodgers? Well, Holiday with the double to left, and the batter will be Jambi, then Cabrera and Crosby. Jambi popped up in the second inning to Rafael for call. Check swing. They're going to look. No swing, says Adrian Johnson. Jambi nine home runs. And of course, he has built a sizable reputation on hitting home runs. 2 0 oh the count. And of course, since Joe Torrey managed him, and Joe as a former catcher, I'm sure Torrey would have talked to Randy Wolf and his other pitchers as to how to pitch to Jason Jambi. 2 0. Oh. Fastball, two and one. Jambi has had a remarkable career. Came to the A's in 1995 and has been in the big leagues ever since. He has hit as many as 43 home runs and he's had as many as 137 runs batted in. And he's trying to pick up Holiday. Ball three. Randy's struggling. He's had six three ball counts already while walking three. And he walked two in the third inning and it cost him the run. Jami was born in West Covina. Fouled away. Went to Cal State Long Beach. And the A's drafted him in the second round in 1992. And inside of three years, he was playing in the big leagues. And never left MVP nine years ago. Staying power when the A's were here last in 2000, he was playing in that series. He's the only one left. And a pop fly to shallow left. Pierre coming up makes the catch. And you had to have Pierre speed to catch up to it. So Holiday holds on at second base. One away. And Orlando Cabrera coming up. So Jambi just a pop fly to left. It's a typical stage in Jason Jambi's career for every veteran in every sport. What used to come so easily, so easily, without any thought, without hardly any effort. Now it is a struggle. Of course, John B is 38 years old. Orlando Cabrera singled a right field in the second inning. Slow curveball, but it stayed up. Ball one. The kid from Cartagena in Colombia. Two gold gloves. Been on the move of late. Red Sox, Angels, White Sox, Oakland. And has gotten in the playoffs for the last five years. Not much on that pitch, and Randy wants another ball. It was a curveball, but there was no curve to it. 2 and 0 oh the count. For the pride of the Valley and Pepperdine, Randy Wolf. Dodgers one, A's one, top of the fourth. That's in there. 2 and 1. In the low 70s, but he kind of sneaked it in at the knees. At second, Matt Holliday with a lead off double, one out. Two and one to Cabrera. Three and one to Orlando, waiting on deck, Bobby Crosby. Crosby walked. 
in the third inning and scored the run when Suzuki doubled him in. That's going to go in the air down the line. Foul. Ethier in pursuit. Reaches in and backhands it. And tagging up and alertly moving a third is Holiday. Fine play by Andre Ethier. Tough play right down. Bending over the railing and able to backhand it. And then Holiday heads up, tags, and moves to third. Good play. Very good play. And then he knew that it was too late. But he knew Holiday was going to tag. Now let's see. Crosby followed by Davis, and they'll pitch to Bobby. Two out, one one tie, fourth inning. Off speed, breaking ball hit to Blake. And Casey takes care of him. No runs, a leadoff double. Epia makes a fine defensive play, and at the end of the week. Sandwiches, three mini home style chicken fillets on toasted mini buns. And by Southwest Airlines, ready when you are. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. We have a 1 1 tie, bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Andre Ethier, followed by Matt Kemp and James Loney. Randy Wolf, a 15 pitch inning there in the top of the fourth inning. And ball one to Andre. The single to right field first time up. Each year hitting 274. 11 home runs. 41 runs batted in. 2 and 0 they count to Andre. Kurt Suzuki doubled in Crosby. And Orlando Hudson homered and that's it. 1-1. One, one. Foul ball. Two and one to Andre Ethier. Then Mazzaro, the young fella out of Hackensack, New Jersey. Breaking ball hit up the middle. Backhanded by Kennedy, who gets him. A nice play for Adam Kennedy to take a hit away from Ethier. And we have one away. Remember the trivia question? We were talking about the 88 World Series. The Dodgers won four games to one, but which pitcher earned the only win for Oakland in that World Series? Do you remember? And the answer? Sure, the Dodger finishing coach, Rick Honeycutt. He had two hitless innings. The A's won a tough game two to one. The four Dodger winning pitchers on that 88 club, Alejandro Pena, Tim Belcher, 
and Oral Hershiser who won twice. Oh and one the count as Kemp now gets in the hole oh and two. Matt grounded out to the right side second inning. That was the play where Jambi was almost caught on the horns of the dilemma. Fastball hit slowly to third Crosby guns him down. Two away. Bobby Crosby. When he first came to the A's, they gave him number eight. And he was thrilled because number eight was the number one by Cal Ripken Jr. all during his playing career. Crosby absolutely idolized Cal. And when he got the number eight and went to play in Baltimore, ecstatic. That was back in 2003. 2004, they issued him number seven. Oh, here he is. Who's wearing eight? Kurt Suzuki, the catcher, who calls himself Yogi Suzuki. Anyway, the story behind the number. 1 0 the count to James Loney. Now 2 0. James walked intentionally to load the bases in the second inning, and it worked well for the A's thanks to Cabrera's leaping catch. Big bouncer up the middle. Kennedy behind the bag. Gets it over to Jambi, and that's the inning. So the Dodgers go one, two, three for the second time in four innings. And Vin Mazzaro. Mazzaro will be coming up second in the inning. Rajay Davis will start it off. Davis flied to center in the third inning. And Mazzaro then followed with a sacrifice, advancing Crosby to second base, and he eventually scored. Ball one. Rajay, R A J A I. In Sanskrit, it means king. And he strokes a single. The so Davis a leadoff single and Randy's having Major some Major trouble Major with the leadoff man. He walked Kennedy in the first inning. He walked Crosby in the third. He gave up a double to Holiday in the fourth and a leadoff single to Davis here in the fifth. The only time he got the leadoff man was the second inning when he struck out Holiday. So that is not a good way to pitch. One run, four hits for the A's in this 1 1 tie. And Mazzaro has to bunt again. He's three for three. 
Davis runs very well. Has stolen seven out of eleven. Dodgers and A's locked in one one. Fifth inning. Davis under the eyes of Todd Staverson. First base coach Mike Diego over at third. Randy Wolf, three wins, two losses, and nine no decisions. Foul of run back, 0 and 1. That fastball was almost like a cutter. Mazzaro around looked like he was going to have a good pitch to bunt, and the next thing you know, it was in on the handle. And drops the bunt down again. But he's got. Four sacrifices in two games against the National League. That's a great job. You know the Dodgers return home Friday, June 26, to face Ishiro and the Mariners on Japanese Heritage Night. Festivities include fireworks, a unique seating option that includes a free Dodger Town Japan T-shirt, and an all-inclusive Japanese menu. For tickets, call 866 Dodgers. Or visit Dodgers.com slash sit in my town today. Ishiro will be here. Ichiban, number one. Then Mazzaro can open up a pitcher's clinic on how to bunt. So Davis at second and Kennedy trying to advance him. That's a strike. 0 and 1. Adam, the rage from Riverside. Davis with for call, trying to bird dog him a little bit, take a step away. Chasing that big curveball. 0 and 2, the count to Adam. Kennedy has walked twice. He was hitting about a buck and a half against left hand pitching, but overall batting 308. No balls and two strikes. One and two. Randy around 70 pitches I would guess at this moment here in the fifth inning. Fastball. Still one and two and that was number 67. So we knew he was somewhere in the neighborhood. And he hits 91 on the gun. Well and watching Randy tonight. We haven't seen him cough, so well, that's good news. Dropped the arm angle that time, but was off the plate. Two and two. Veteran second baseman, Adam Kennedy. He's 33. Randy's 32. They've both been at it for quite a while. Kennedy went to Cal State Northridge. Time. Still two and two. Adam Kennedy's dad was a baseball coach at North High in Riverside. Also taught history and sociology at the school. So Adam was brought up right. Two and two. 
Ground ball to for call. Runner has nowhere to go, and with that arm, Raphael can take his time. Two out in the fifth inning. Kennedy frustrated because he has been very, very successful hitting well over 400 with runners in scoring position, but he couldn't pick them up that time. Can't get them all. So it's still 1 1, 2 out, and the batter is Kurt Suzuki. Hit into a double play in the first inning and doubled in a run in the third. Big slow curveball, but a miss. Ball one. One and oh to Kurt. That's in there. One and one. Suzuki grew up in Maui, but his father's parents are from Japan. And Oakland and the Red Sox opened up in Tokyo last year and they had a big family reunion. Little ground ball to for call. Nice pick on the run to get him. So a leadoff single. And for Randy Wolf, he's living dangerously, but he's getting away with it. And at the end of four. Of the first commandments in pitching get the leadoff man and he has not done that but he's getting away with it. So one one and here is Martin who had a chance to pick up a couple of RBIs and Orlando Cabrera canceled out the chance. So Russell 0 for 1 hitting 235. Fastball ball one. Mazzaro hitting 93 to 95. The guy throws hard. Breaking ball strike. One and one. Little slider. Check swing. No swing, says Andy Fletcher. Two balls and one strike to count to Russell Martin. Russell no home runs 20 runs batting in late on a fastball two and two to count Dodgers heading to Anaheim tomorrow night Chad Billingsley and left-handed Joe Saunders 
And then Saturday night, the brothers, Jeff Weaver and Jared Weaver. Sunday, Clayton Kershaw and John Lackey. Little ground ball in a hurry is Cabrera double clutch and lost him. Orlando did not have a grip cleanly tried to double and it was late. It'll be a base hit for Russell Martin. And the battle will be Randy Wolf. Here's the double clutch and the late throw. It reminded me of one of the great hitters the game has ever seen who was a marvelous player for the Pittsburgh Pirates a long time ago Paul Wayner and Paul Wayner was very close to his 3000th hit and it was the second game of a double header late in the second game the bunt will be picked up by whom Suzuki to get him. anyway. Paul Wayner hit a slow ground ball to short similar to that play and they gave him a base hit and Wayner stood at first base and kept waving up to the official score no 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 I don't want that hit so they said well if you don't want it you don't get it so they took the hit away that was the end of the double header next day was an off day then his first time up the next game, bam, base hit, 3,000 base hits, and he said, that's the way I want it. So if anybody ever talks about a hitter screaming and hollering, I don't want the hit, remember Paul Wayner. Well, here's Juan Pierre. Whoa, ball one. Mazzara runs that thing right in at him. We mentioned he's not afraid to go inside. He almost went inside Pierre. So Martin at second, one out, fifth inning in a 1 1 time. Fastball strike. Pierre grounded out, fly to left, 0 for 2. One run, four hits, no errors for each side. One and two. Zaro has four strikeouts. He struck out for Paul and Hudson in the first inning. Then he got Wolf in the second, Blake in the third, and now he has Pierre, one ball and two strikes. Fast ball up and in. Two and two. He is not a strikeout pitcher yet. Against the White Sox, he struck out one in six and a third inning. Against Baltimore in seven and a third, he struck out four. And against the Giants, he went six and struck out four. So he has four so far tonight. Two and two. Three and two with Raphael for call on deck. Zaro walked Loney intentionally. That's the only pass that he has given up so far. And he is right on the edge with Pierre. Pierre has walked as many times as he has struck out. Sixteen. And promptly hits it to center. Base hit. Here comes Martin. Rajay's Davis throw very short. Picked up by Suzuki, and they get Pierre going into second base. But the run is in. A poor throw by Rajay Davis, and Kurt Suzuki turns it into an out. Wonderful heads-up play by the young Oakland catcher. Almost a slip out of Davis' hand. Is he charging? He has a play, and then nothing happened. The ball hit the grass behind the mound, and Suzuki turned it into a play to Cabrera. 
but Martin comes home on the single and the Dodgers now have a two to one lead. What a wonderful play by Suzuki. What a poor throw by Rajay Davis. That's a strike to for call on one. Dodgers two runs five hits. And the A's one run four hits. On the outside corner. Oh and two for call struck out and fouled out. Hitting 245. Fastball. And at 95, you can understand for call being a little late in trying to get around that. Ball one. Dodgers two runs, five hits. The A's one run, four hits. Little foul ball. Little number fielded in fair ground. And that'll do it for for call as Suzuki throws him out. But the Dodgers get a tie breaking run. Good. In straight years of over 100 RBIs, 11 straight years with 20 or more home runs. He had 14 grand slams, wound up with 370 home runs, and isn't in the Hall of Fame. Let's go back to this one. Two to one in favor of the Dodgers and promptly another leadoff man gets on base. So Wolf is really pitching a different game as Jack Cust singles. Just look at it. Kennedy opened the first with a walk. Crosby opened the third with a walk. Holiday opened the fourth with a double. Davis opened the fifth with a single. And Cust now opens the sixth with a single. That is not the way to do it, but Randy's doing it, and he's leading two to one. Now the batter is Matt Holliday, ball one. 
Holiday struck out and doubled one for two. That's a strike. One and one. One other note about Gil Hodges. I've been privileged to know a lot of people in this game. I think he was the finest man that I've ever met who wore a baseball uniform. The finest. Ball two, two and one. Hero in World War II in the Marines. And you want to talk about straight arrow? You want to talk about an ideal model for youth? Gil Hodges. Two and one. Slow curveball, bang to third. On his knees is Blake to get a force play. Safe at first. So Casey goes down to get it and turns it into a force. The cust is erased. Tough to throw Just on your knees and get enough on it. But he turned it into the force play, 5 4. So Holiday is at first another solid, rock solid play by Casey Blake. He does them day in and day out. And the batter is Jason Jombie. Jombie popped up, flied to shallow left, 0 for 2. We were talking before about Jombie after he, he hit that little pop fly to left field. How tough it is for him to do what he used to do effortlessly. But you know, last year, last year he was 37 and he had 32 home runs and 96 RBIs with the Yankees. Well, he's struggling at 207, but got a long way to go. Matt Holliday at first, one out, sixth inning, two to one Dodgers. Down and dirty, blocked nicely by Russell Martin. One ball and no strikes. So Randy has given up five hits. He has also walked three. He has struck out three, and he's leading two to one. Martin. Checking with his skipper. Matt Holliday is a big man and a left fielder, and you don't think of him in with speed or anything like that, but he has stolen six out of eight. And last year with the Rockies, he stole 28. You can't take him for granted at all. You don't think of home run hitters as base stealers, but he can do it. Well, she got a veteran left hander eyeballing him, and he has a very short lead. And 3 0 now to Jambi. Well, what would you do if you Bob Guerin? I mean, you got a guy with a lot of power, Rick Honeycutt, on the phone to the bullpen. Would you green light Jason Jambi 3 0? He might hit one to Pasadena. Nope, strike. Three and one. Mike Gallego may be hanging out a sign three and one. Corey Wade gets up in the Dodger bullpen, and that's ball four to Jambi. So thanks to Casey Blake, the Dodgers are still leading by a run because of that ball that Holiday hits get through. Bases would be loaded with nobody out, and Honeycutt going out to the mound. The so Rick Honeycutt, who wore the gold and green with great distinction, he was a very valuable pitcher for Oakland. Was he'd be valuable wherever he is, and now coming out to Council Randall. He gave you that note earlier in 1988. Dodgers won the World Series four games to one. And the one Oakland pitcher who beat the Dodgers in that series was Rick Honeycutt. Honeycutt was with Oakland 
from 1987 after he left the Dodgers through 93. And then he actually came back and pitched for Oakland again briefly in 1995. 21 years in the majors. All right, two on, one out. Here's Cabrera, single to right and fouled out to right. Remember, Ethia went to the railing to lean in and backhand the ball. Breaking ball in, ball one. Cabrera hitting 232. Two home runs. 21 runs batted in. Fastball is low and in. Ball two. Cabrera in his salad days was a pretty good man with runners on. In fact, one year with the Expos, he had 96 runs batted in. Last year with the Angels, he had 86. 2 and 0. I said last year, two years ago. And ball three. So Randy is struggling now. 3 and 0 to Cabrera. Cabrera has walked 20 times and has struck out 22. In there, three and one. So Pierre has great numbers 16 walks, 16 strikeouts, and Cabrera is close. Three and one to Orlando. And a chopper to Blake. He goes down to Hudson and he goes to first, and the A's are denied again. No runs, one hit, a walk, a man left, and a Strong enough to hit it over the center field fence. Orlando is certainly not considered a big man, but as usual, when you talk about big leaguers, it is not young, it is not old, it is strength. He weighs about 180 pounds, and he's an even six footer. His high in home runs, he had 15 for the Diamondbacks a couple of years ago. And he has five this year. But what a player he is day in and day out. Two and oh. Dodgers lead two to one in the bottom of the sixth inning. Another young pitcher, Ben Mazzaro, on the mound. Fastball hit to Adam Kennedy. 
You know in the last 17 games Bob Guerin the manager of Oakland has sent a rookie pitcher out to the mound in 13 of the 17 games. So they really have some fine young pitchers. With one away, here's Casey Blake. Ball one. There's young Trevor Cahill, who gave the Dodgers fits. He also bothered himself. Remember, he had 12 straight misses of the strike zone and walked three in a row and got away with it. One and one to count to Casey Blake. And of course, Dallas Braden pitched the first game. A 21 year old went six and allowed only two runs. One and two the count to Casey Blake hitting 303. Randy Wolf has made 87 pitches. And there's still activity in the Dodger bullpen. High fly ball into right center. Rajay Davis has a bead on it. Well, that'll do it for Casey. Two down in the sixth inning. And the batter will be Andre Ethan. I think Casey feels that he got a pitch that he could really handle and just did not quite get enough of it. Only thing more frustrating than that, of course, is to have somebody rob you over here. Here's Andre Ethier, single to right, and talking about being robbed of a hit, Adam Kennedy took a possible hit away from him in the fourth inning. Meanwhile, Randy Wolf talking to Rick Honeycutt. He's made 87 pitches. He's had eight three ball counts. The A's have a very struggling offense and they're struggling again tonight. For Bob Guerin's team, they are one for eight with runners in scoring position. That's when Suzuki doubled in Crosby. One and one. That's just fine. Two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. One run, five hits for the A's. 22 year old Vin Mazzaro. And two. Fastball, whack foul. Boy, Andy Fletcher, the first base umpire, in a hurry to leave the premises on that line drive. Good move, Andy. One and two. So Ethier strikes out. The Dodgers go one, two, three. It's five strikeouts for Vin Mazzaro. And at the end.
AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. We're having great games with the Oakland A's. The Dodgers won in 10 innings 5 to 4. The A's came back to win 5 to 4 and the Dodgers lead tonight 2 to 1. Randy Wolf 87 pitches and he comes out leading 2 to 1. And they give the ball to Corey Wade and his first pitch to Bobby Crosby is in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. So Corey trying to hold on to this lead. And a fly ball to shallow center. Kemp comes in for it. Crosby a fly ball and Rajay Davis coming up. Joe Torrey before the game was talking about his pitching and he said he was going to give Jonathan Broxton an extra day's rest because of the sore toe. And Joe said he probably got the sore toe from that little body of his pushing off and throwing 98 miles an hour. Well anyway John Jonathan will have the night off. Wade and Troncoso did not pitch last night. Leach Moda and Belisario did. Leach is up again in the pen and Wade with one out has an 0 and 1 count on Rajay Davis. Foul ball. Nomar Garcia Parra is out on deck. He'll be batting for Vin Mazzaro. The Nomar will make yet another appearance. Fly to center last night, grounded to first. The night before. 0 oh and 2. And he is hit by the pitch and awarded first base. So the tying run is now aboard. And the batter will be Nazaro. Interesting that as far as being hit by pitch, Oakland. Has been hit 25 times, and Oakland pitchers have hit only eight. So Vin Mazzaro, with Trevor Cahill standing alongside of him, a couple of brilliant young pitchers. He did very well, but he's out losing two to one, and here is Nomar. Garcia Parra batting 245. Two home runs, eight runs batted in. That's ball one. One and oh. Brilliant career, and it was a pleasure to have him on the ball club here. One and oh, the count. Nomar with the Dodgers in 06 and 07. Spent a little time in Vegas and then spent. 08 with the Dodgers, so just about three years. Plagued by injuries the last couple of years. Nomar will be 36. Breaking ball lifted to shallow left. Pierre coming a long way, and the ball's gonna drop. Going into third base easily is Davis. He keeps on coming because the Dodgers threw to second. And the game is tied. How do you like that? Where Rajay Davis was, he knew the ball was not going to be caught. And he was already to third, and the Dodgers just had their pocket pick. Little fly ball, Pierre very deep, can't catch up to it. Finally plays the hop and is told to throw to second by Fercall. And as soon as Fercall pointed to second, Rajay Davis says, Thank you very much. So the guy who's really burned out there on the infield is not Pierre, it's for call. The well, Rafael thing, why did I tell him to throw to second? Why didn't he give me the ball and that throw to the plate? If you look at the play again, it is very clear that Rafael pointed to second base, telling Pierre where to throw the ball. The well, Rajay Davis getting a big kick out of it. Watch the play now. Here's the fly ball, but keep your eye on for call. Pierre picks it up. Raphael points to second. Pierre says, okay, I'll follow you. And Davis says, well, thanks so very much. 
and Rajay comes home, and we have a tied up ball game, and the Dodgers are embarrassed. And Brent Leach will be coming in. The A's having a pretty good smile, and we'll be back. thought as once again we see Pierre instructed to throw to second and Rajay Davis steal the run home. The fact that Randy Wolf will now have another no decision. Ten of them. And here's Brent Leach. So Corey Wade hits a batter, gives up a base hit and a run. Dodgers hoping maybe Davis had missed third, but he was all over the bag. So Adam Kennedy trying to keep it going with a runner at first and one out. Check swing. Nomar standing at first, held on by Gene Loney. Fastball hit wide a third. Blake to Hudson in Deloney and the Dodgers turn their third double play. However, they give up a run. Heads up play by Rajay Davis, an embarrassing.
Another good ball game. The Dodgers and A's a 2-2 tie. Bottom of the seventh inning. Brad Ziegler will now come out of the bullpen. And for Ziegler, he has been in each of the three games. Pitch the tenth inning and lost the extra inning game. Pitch the seventh inning briefly last night. And now comes right back in again. Last year as a rookie, absolutely brilliant. Not quite so second time around. Ground ball to first. Yambi takes it to the bag, and that'll do it for Matt Kemp. One pitch and one away in the seventh. Number seven, James Rooney. If you wonder about that fly ball single to left field, Nomar Garcia Parra gets a base hit, but no run batted in. The run comes home on a fielder's choice when Pierre, instructed by Fertal, threw into second base to Orlando Hudson. And then Hudson had to throw to the plate too late. So 2-2, two, two, one away in the seventh. And here's James Loney. Walked intentionally and grounded out. Almost hit him, ball one. Ziegler, 6'4, 195. Born in Kansas, lives in Missouri, went to Southwest Missouri State. Ground ball inside third, down the line, hits the tarp roller and stays there. And so it's a double. And the ball disappeared. Went right under the covering. So Loney, a one out double to left. Taking that pitch that seems to rise up out of the ground like a Polaris. And hits it inside third. Two runs and six hits for each side. Belisario begins to warm up in the Dodger bullpen. And Russell Martin trying to pick up Loney. No one in the on deck circle for the Dodgers. That's a strike. So an empty circle basically is against the rules. And now finally, Mark Loretta comes up the steps and he'll fill the open area. 0 oh 1 to count. Fouled away. Are you old enough to remember? Where the pitcher stayed in the dugout and the leadoff man went to the on deck circle. Do you remember that? Well, it wasn't that many years ago. Well, that's the way it used to be. They would try to save the pitcher's energy and have the leadoff man take over, and they changed the rule. They said, no, if you're pitching, you play, you get out there. Only now you have a pinch hitter taking his spot in Loretta. One and two to count to Russell Martin. And Loretta waiting on deck. Two and two. Each side scored in the third. Dodgers had a go ahead run in the fifth, only to have the A's tied in the seventh. That's off the plate. Three and two to Russell Martin. Fouled at the plate. Though no, Russell is still there, hitting 238. Ziegler was a rookie last year, but it took him a while to get here. He was 28 years old when he made his debut. Three and two to count. Big breaking ball for ball four. So the Dodgers have two on, one out, and Mark Loretta coming up. So the Bob Guerin, an anxious moment in this 2 2 tie. Number five, Mark Loretta. 
Mark Loretta, as you know, has done a good job as a pinch hitter, although he has struggled of late. Loretta, 8 for 27. That would be a 296 batting average as exclusively a pinch hitter. But he's also 0 for his last 14 in pinch hit appearances. He does have one walk. So Garen checking and Loretta waiting. 2 2, bottom of the seventh. Fastball in there for a strike. 0 oh 1 to Mark. Jeff Loney at second, Martin at first. One out, bottom of the seventh, in a 2 2 time. And ground ball, base hit into left field. Here comes Loney. Holiday throw cut off, and they have a run down on Martin. They will nail him, maybe. Cabrera tags him out. Down to second base goes Loretta, and the Dodgers have a 3 to 2 lead. Well, Mark Loretta, a ground ball single and a run batted in. Martin is erased for the second the out. Number nine, Ron Pierre. And finally, Adam Kennedy making the tag. So three to two Dodgers, bottom of the seventh inning. And the batter will be Juan Pierre, but before Pierre, they'll go to the bullpen. The bullpen has been pretty shaky for Oakland. And they're going to bring in Craig Breslow for the third time. Bob Guerin, once upon a time, was involved with the Dodgers in the sense that when the Dodgers signed infielder Gerald Thomas, Bob Guerin originally drafted by the Padres as compensation for the Dodgers signing Daryl Thomas. And we'll be back. Left-hander Craig Breslow, we've told you about him before, but in case you haven't heard, his background is really something. He in molecular biophysics and biochemistry from Yale University. He specialized in stem cell research. That's a strike to Pierre. Motivated to end of medicine, his sister had thyroid cancer. Fortunately, she beat the disease, but 
he dedicated himself to pursue a career in medicine. And so you say, well, what's he doing pitching? Overhand pitch fouled off 0 and 2. Well, as Craig said, I have a very small window in which to play baseball. And I figure I can always go back to going into a medical degree at 40. So he's pitching. He also established a foundation back in Connecticut to increase awareness and raise funds for cancer research. So he's got quite a background, quite a young man. Craig Breslow. Off the plate. One and two to count. Three runs, seven hits for the Dodgers, two runs, six hits for the A's. Remember the Dodger record is 12 and 2 in one run games at home. So Loretta who's just broken the tie waiting for a lift home and Pierre badly fooled and strikes out. However the Dodgers get a run Loretta bangs it home and at the end of 7 3 2 Dodgers. Herrera hit a ball down the line. Andre going to the stands to make a backhand catch. Alertly trying to go after Holiday, who even more alertly had tagged up and taken to third. But all in all, it was a fine play. First, Ethier, who was shading towards right center with a right hand hitter up, then to make the catch, and then showing alert play by trying to get Holiday at third. Now it's the eighth inning. Another tough one, and Ronald Belisario, who made 11 pitches last night in pitching the ninth inning, and he was helped on a dazzling play by Orlando Hudson on a ball hit by Cabrera. Now he'll get Suzuki, Cust, and Holiday in that order. 0 oh and 1 to Kurt Suzuki, who is grounded into a double play. Doubled in a run and grounded to short. The problem for the A's tonight and throughout the series, an inability to come up with a key hit with runners in scoring position. They've had a bunch of them. Line foul, 0 and 2. Going back to the third inning while Suzuki gets another bat. In the third inning, they had a run in, runners at second and third, and Cuss struck out. In the fourth inning, they had Holiday lead off with a double and they failed to even advance him. They left Davis at second base with one out in the fifth inning. They had two on and one out in the sixth, and Cabrera hit into a double play. So Belisario comes in and promptly strikes out Question Suzuki one away in the eighth inning. And the batter now Jack Cust. 
Dust has struck out twice, single to center, one for three. He has struck out five times in the three games, but of course that's that's all part of his style. He has struck out 63 times last year, 197. But if you make a mistake, boom. One and all. And ball two. Dodgers load up the right side of the infield. The one thing they do, however, is they keep Casey Blake at third because Cusk burned them last night with a bunt single up along third. There wasn't anybody there to pick it up. Blake was over near second base last night, not tonight. So Belisario behind 3 and 0. And with a guy like Cust, if you're Bob Guerin, you might decide he's a free swinger. Give him three swings. We'll see. And he takes that all away. You figured that Guerin might do something daring. When he was with the Yankees, he allowed his head to be shaved during a nine game winning streak. They said he was as bald as a cue ball when he went under the blade. Little ground ball. Orlando is there, and that'll do it for Cust. So two down, and Matt Holiday coming up. You know, you can stay connected with the Dodgers and Dodger fans around the world at dodgers.com slash connect. You can become a fan on K Facebook, follow on Twitter, or get inside the Dodgers with their front office blog. Find all these and more at dodgers.com forward slash connect. Two down, and the batter will be Matt Holliday. Paid attendance tonight, and it is a whopper. Paid attendance 50,000. 5 0. 492. We understand over 4,000 walk ups. Folks who just decided beautiful evening, 72. Let's take in a game. So here's Matt, struck out, doubled, hit into a force play. Holiday three for ten in the series. Dodgers three, A's two, eighth inning. One ball and one strike. Since Broxton can't close, and they've already used Wade, the thought is that Troncoso would be the closer tonight. And there's Ramon, sure enough, getting ready. Two and one the count. You may remember for Troncoso, he had probably his worst game of the year against the A's in game one of the series, which the Dodgers eventually won. Two and one. Fastball hit foul. Two and two. Matt Holliday, eight home runs, 38 runs batted in. Not quite the same numbers when he played with Colorado and had 34 home runs and 36 home runs with as many as 137 runs batted in. Can't call it a far cry. After all, he's, he's only 29. As an outfielder and a hitter, he's got a long career in front of him. There you can see that he has indeed come down to earth from the mile high Coors Field. Still a force to be reckoned with. Two and two. And down he goes. Good fastball in on the hands. So a one, two, three inning for Belisario. And at the end of seven.
to two. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be for Paul Hudson and Blake. Baseball is an incredible game. So many different things can happen. And just look what's taken place so far tonight. Randy Wolf gets another no decision. That gives him 10. Brent Leach could get a victory and he made a total of two pitches. Two. Randy made 87. 2 and 0 the count of for call turning around to bat right handed for the first time. 0 for 3. Craig Breslow. The Yale Bulldog. From the tables down at Morey's in there. Did you ever hear the Yale Glee Club sing that? Oh, wow. Beautiful. Fouled away. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for the Dodgers. One home run by Orlando Hudson. Two runs, six hits for the A's. And we're in the bottom of the eighth. And he walks. So Breslow puts for call aboard, and the batter is Orlando Hudson. Struck out, homer, batting left handed, and grounded out. Hudson has five home runs, four of the five hitting left handed. Waiting on deck, Casey Blake. They have to wonder about for call as Breslow goes over there. Raphael has not been on a tear, however. He's stolen four, but he's been caught three times. Crosby plays up on the grass at third. There goes for call. Miss at the plate. Throw down, and they get him. Kurt Suzuki hangs him out to drive with a perfect throw to Orlando Cabrera. So for call now is four for eight. Although that was probably a hit and run play. Watch for call. See him looking back. Yeah, that was hit and run. And he's nailed two six. Good throw by Suzuki. Almost a missed tag. And a nice block by Suzuki. So Raphael back in the dugout, one out in the eighth, three two Dodgers. When the A's come up in the ninth inning, they are due to send up Jason Jombi, Orlando Cabrera, and Bobby Crosby. Two and one. Orlando hitting 311. Five home runs, 36 runs batted in. Way out in front of that off speed pitch. That off speed pitch, they said, when they first put up in the 50s, a little faster than that. Two and two to count to Orlando Hudson. Craig Breslow. A little roller down to get it is Breslow. Tough play and nips him at first. Two out in the eighth inning. Good play by Breslow. And now with Casey Blake coming up, Bob Guerin is going to make a move. He will not have his left hander pitching to a home run threat. He's had Russ Springer down in the bullpen, and Russ will be called in. We saw the veteran pitch in the sixth inning last night, and we'll be back.
spot him. He said his high school game grew about six girlfriends and a couple of parents. But one day he was en route to go swimming and he saw a tryout camp. He got out of the car, grabbed his cleats and his glove, and walked over. And they said, Yes, can we help you? Well, he wasn't in uniform, he had flip flops and shorts on. And they kind of ignored it until the scout heard the catcher's mitt pop. They turned around and put the gun on him, and Springer was throwing 94, and he was 16 years old. Uh, that was the beginning of his career. But ever since that day, he's had a lot of shoulder problems, arm surgery, but he's lasted. 0 oh, and 2 the count. <laughs> the, the gun has gone haywire. They had one pitch at 51 thrown by Breslow. Now that last pitch they had at 114. That's adding two pitches together to get 114. 0 oh, and 2 the count to Casey Blake. And fastball up the middle, base hit. So it's got to be maddening. You're a manager and you go by the book. You have your left hander in there. He gets Hudson, but you're afraid of Blake's power. So you bring a veteran right hander in and base hit. And now the left hand hitter is Andre Ephier, and there you are, having already made the decision. Ethier single to right, robbed of a hit by Kennedy, and struck out. The A's bullpen has not been particularly efficient in the series. Andre hitting 271, 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in, two out, bottom of the eighth, 3 2 Dodgers. Trying to do it again, trying to win another one run game. That's a strike. 0 oh and 2. When Springer was at LSU, and he still had that hard fastball, he set records for most strikeouts. He was averaging better than 11 strikeouts per nine innings. 0 oh and 2. And nice save by Suzuki. Boy, he is something. The uh, Suzuki saving Springer a wild pitch for sure. Backhands it, dives on his knees, and holds on to it. So a good play by Suzuki trying to bail out the veteran, and I should say that Springer is a veteran. Blake at first, two out, one and two the count to eat here. Springer will be 41 in November. Boy, he's made a lot of pitches and he's had surgeries, all kinds of problems in his shoulder and arm, and yet here he is grinding it out for over 20 years as a pro and originally signed out of LSU by the Yankees. Lives in Pollock, Louisiana. And a drive into left center, Rajay Davis picks it off. So here come the A's, last call, ninth inning, Jason Jambi, Orlando Cabrera.
It looked like he had Troncoso to come in. However, Troncoso pitched the eighth inning of game one, gave up a three run home run to Jason Jombie and a home run to Bobby Crosby. And who are the hitters in the ninth inning? Jason Jombie and Bobby Crosby. So he's going to stay with Belisario. And here's Jombie 0 for 2 with a walk. And a high fly ball, very playable. It'll be Pierre. Well, Jambi goes 0 for 3 on one pitch, one away. And the batter, Orlando Cabrera. Dodgers three runs, eight hits, and no errors. The Athletics two runs, six hits, and no errors. Dodgers are trying to get above 500 against the American League for the year. They would be five and four, and they would have won four of six in the stretch of 15. With the Angels starting tomorrow night in Anaheim. Fastball. Cabrera single to right, fouled out to right, grounded into a double play. All through the series, the A's have been spinning their wheels with runners in scoring position. Ground ball off the glove of Orlando. That should be a base hit. That would have been a very good play to come up with it. So it's a base hit by Cabrera. Bobby Crosby is due up, and Ryan Sweeney, who is just off the DL and has rejoined the club, they sent Kristen Orphia out, and Ryan Sweeney coming up. So Hudson, no doubt in his heart, thinking he might have made the play, but it would have been exceptional. And now, with Sweeney coming up, Joe's going to the mound. Ryan Sweeney out of Iowa. Came to Oakland from the Chicago White Sox. And let's see how they determine this. Belisario out, Francoso in, and we'll be back. First, Ramon Trancoso will not pitch to Bobby Crosby. Ryan Sweeney will bat for Crosby, who had homered against Trancoso the other night. So Sweeney just coming back to join the club. He was hitting 246, two home runs, 15 RBIs when he went on the DL. A graduate of Xavier High School out of Cedar Rapids, he pitched as a junior. And he was 9 and 0 with an earned run average of 0.3. And he was going to go to San Diego State University and instead signed with Oakland. Sweeney is a big fella, 6'4, 221, 24 years old. One out. Cabrera does not do much stealing anymore. 
Orlando has stolen two, but he's been caught three times. There were days way back in the low minors where he stole as many as 51, and in the big leagues, as many as 27. That's a strike to Sweeney. 0 and 1. Dodgers three runs, eight hits. A's two runs, seven hits. The A's have gotten at least one man on base in every inning except the eight when two of the three hitters struck out. And a ground ball to Casey down to Orlando. Back to first. Double play. Dodgers turn another one. They have turned three double plays tonight. In fact, that was the fourth to be exact. And as Orlando Hudson says thank you and a hug from Raphael for call, the Dodgers win yet another one-run game.